Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government and business provided an update this week on progress being made to tackle the electricity and freight logistics crises. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss recent developments. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. What was on the agenda of the meeting this week between senior business leaders and President Ramaphosa and his cabinet? Well, it's this regular meeting that's now taking place over the last nine months. There's this collaboration that's e emerged around the three hot button issues or the crisis issues of uh, electricity load shedding and the freight logistics collapse that's are associated with Transnet underperformance both at the ports and on the rail. And then obviously our ongoing crime and violence and corruption problems. And uh, the, the message that was received that there's definitely some progress, particularly on the load shedding and on the uh, freight logistics front. So that, I think, occupied a lot of the time uh, and attention and also was on the agenda of what the next items must be to get us over this, this really growth and confidence sapping period for South Africa. Detailed feedback was provided on efforts to tackle load shedding. Yes, I think uh, this has obviously been the number one constraint on growth over more than a decade now. And it remains a, a bane of South African business and households uh, with ongoing almost daily load shedding. And I think what the message was is that, although they know it's still horrific and terrible, there's definitely been some improvement in the first few months of the year. Um, and the, the, they were basically comparing sort of the first two months uh, of, of 2024 versus the first two months of 2023. Now that's a very low bar because we know that 2023 was extremely, extremely bad year for, for load shedding. It's our worst ever year and hopefully should never be repeated. And, but there has been a less intense, maybe not less frequent because we're still basically experiencing daily, sh daily load shedding, but less intense periods. We have had times where we've descended into stage six and stage four, uh, but these have been less than the same period last year. But it's nothing massively to write home about yet, but there was that feeling that the efforts that are underway to help Eskom with its maintenance program and also then to add new capacity to the grid are starting to, to bear some fruit. And then the, there was the outlook to trying to add 10.6 uh, gigawatts, uh, either through recovered uh, capacity from the really unreliable coal fleet or new capacity and doing that on a combination of you know rooftop has been a massive revolution people call it the quiet revolution about 5,000 mega megawatts of capacity added last year uh, obviously a lot of that with batteries and inverters well more with all the inverters but with battery storage as well so that helps during the day I think lowering the the, the intensity of load shedding then we've got these big private procurement programs that are starting to gain traction. We've seen Sassel with its large announcements, Anglo-American with its large announcements, and various others doing a lot of work around the utility scale private projects. And then, um, of course, we've got the public procurement to come, uh, which has been very much a stop-start story. But overall, there's this view that we can add this by 10.6 gigawatts by the end of next year, and that as we add this incrementally during 2024, by the end of 20, this year, there's a feeling that the frequency and intensity of load shedding should be a lot lower. Now, obviously, we'll all have to wait and see whether that is, is really the case. And there's a lot of skepticism. But that was the sort of optimistic high road picture presented after this latest meeting. There was also a report back on the Transnet recovery plan and reforms in that sector. Yes, there, I think <coughs> given, you know, the long period of not dealing with the electricity crisis, you know, I think there was a, there was a lot of cynicism about whether uh, we can turn around Transnet, which became the next big uh, crisis and it remains, I mean, a daily, uh, a daily cost to the economy at about a billion rand. But uh, it seems that really the, this concerted action since about October last year, the message is that this collaboration and the culture change that has taken place under the new Transnet leadership and an openness to working with the private sector and the clients, the customers themselves really putting shoulder to the wheel, helping Transnet with spares, helping Transnet with repairing, for instance, um, certain locomotives or uh, certain wagons. 
and getting those trains moving again. There's definitely a feeling that that's happening quite quickly. Um, and that's actually starting to come through in the volumes. So uh, I think the cynicism will remain until we really see Transnet performing and we really start seeing these long queues of trucks on certain corridors uh, that are go for stretch sometimes for 10 kilometers. When we start seeing that visibly um, uh, sort of reducing, I think that, that's when people start believing it. But I think there's definitely a speed and agility that we didn't see with the electricity crisis and it's starting to come through on certain corridors and uh, and I think there's, a, there's an optimism uh, around the new leadership at Transnet and the ability to get this moving and then the reforms that will overlay that and the big ones are in, for me in the rail sector the splitting of the infrastructure and the operations business is going to be key to opening up access to the network to third parties, uh, which I think will help start capturing some of that rail friendly volume back to rail. And then of course the private sector participation at the ports. Do you think South Africa could be turning a corner on these two crises? Look, I think we'll have to remain skeptical and we'll have to remain <laughs> somewhat cynical. We've just had so many promises in the past about when load shedding would end. and um, A lot of these have been unrealized and unrealistic and we're in a political heightened season as elections approach. So messages have to be taken sometimes with a pinch of salt. But I think, uh, you know, these are really serious individuals and skills that have come and are meeting regularly at a very high level with cabinet. And there seems to be a receptiveness from cabinet. I think, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. So there's a, an openness and a willingness to, to listen and to uh, embrace it. They've been real uh, skills injected. 350 experts across these three burning platforms, of uh, mostly in the electricity space, but also in the um, uh, logistics and in the crime space, to try and get things moving. So I think it does offer some hope, but we, you know, you know, the proof. People have to see this visibly. They have to see that there isn't this daily load shedding. Uh, that there, there are these. The roads are not totally congested by trucks, that there aren't these uh, um, potholes emerging and dangerous routes emerging because of the overloaded nature of the road network. So I think that uh, there's a strong dose of, of scepticism, but there are definitely signs, I think, that this collaboration is starting to bear some fruit. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.